Hello, everyone. You're in the office with Joseph Skoda. And you know, I'm retired Air Force. I talk about a lot. I'm very proud of my 21 years I served all around the world. And today I have a special guest with me who also did 21 years, but in the Army. And <laughs> hoo hoo <laughs> And it's funny, we both spent time in Ohio, and you did your path mostly in Europe through your career. And I did mostly Asia in my career. And we have a different background of experiences. Well, well tell us, the audience, a little bit about what you learned in the military and, and how they helped you when you finally retired. Sure. Well, my story starts at the age of 17 and go Bucks. Go I'm Bucks. I'm from Ohio, yes. born and raised. Born and I raised joined here. the military at 17. Just thought, well, let me just try something different. I really didn't have college going for me. My family didn't have the money to do college. The sure. second option was go in the military. I was the first to join. So I was setting the path for my, for my family. And I learned as a young leader and, a, and as a young woman that I wanted to make a difference in the military. And I really enjoyed that. And I grew over the years, became a young leader, had soldiers, deployed, traveled the world, sure. things of that nature. And then what I learned from the military were my leadership skills, my sure. personal skills. I almost felt like a psychologist sometimes. <laughs> I also learned how to manage conflict. All right. And how to manage stressful times. I was deployed to Saudi Arabia at the age of 18. That was stressful, yet I had great leaders to follow. Mm -hmm. I was also deployed at the age of 37 to Iraq. Two different dynamics. I was now a leader with soldiers' lives in my hands. So what did I learn from the military? I learned so much about being a leader because that will leak over into my family life. I was a single parent for 13 years, and okay. then I then I met my husband, and we got yeah. married, and we've been married now for 11 years. But being a leader helps you manage your household, manage your family, manage any issues, dilemmas, problems. Hmm. Also, with the resolving conflict, that's also helpful in marriage <laughs> and life itself. And I don't like drama, so I'm always about let's find a resolution. <laughs> so the military helped me also build the steps to problem solving. So I really mm. enjoy that. I take that into everything that I do. I'm able to problem solve. What's the problem? How can we find a solution? How do we get to the solution? There's a solution. Let's move on. Wow. Now, we can talk much about you jumping out of a plane, but I had to yes. do something with that. <laughs> but... Obviously, people learn similar skills, even if they're not in the military. Mm -hmm. How do you think the military gave you an advantage? Did you learn things quicker or was it different yes. because you went to different countries? You, you learned something different of the cultures. That, I mean, what was, what, was the, what was the edge the military gave you? The edge that the military gave me is that they pushed me to be a leader at a young age. Again, I Good went boy. to my first combat zone at the age of 18. Although I wasn't a leader, I was being mentored, but that gave me the edge because my peers were in college, but I was learning how to be a young leader and how to deal with many different issues, not only being in combat, but being a young woman in the military. Sure. So young women in college don't have the opportunity to speak up, to be a leader. That's to true. to have a voice. And I felt like I always had a voice because I had great leaders and great mentors. Sure, you, you had to develop, develop certain skills or confidence at an early age. Exactly. Whether it, was, it takes years to fine tune that until we're dead, obviously. Exactly. But you had something that and you weren't afraid you had to speak up. Correct. And also, I like that you mentioned traveling to other countries. Mm -hmm. Well, I was in Saudi Arabia. I wasn't there to do any uh, any traveling, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't there to see Saudi Arabia. But after Saudi Arabia, I came back for a few months. I'd probably say six or seven months. Mm -hmm. And I was given the opportunity to go to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. They were asking for volunteers. And I was like, me, 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 me. <laughs> and there I was in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba wow. with the Haitian relief effort and I was there for about 120 days. Wow. We would call that a deployment, but in the military, it's called a humanitarian mm -hmm. effort. Mm -hmm. So what I learned from that was what other countries are having problems with. I was learning at a young age. And again, my peers, were they going through this? I was 19, 20 years old seeing this and being part of this huge effort to help the Haitians. 
firsthand, not on the news, not in the paper, exactly. firsthand, and, real life experience. And I was working with the Marines, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, the Army. We were there as a joint um, ar- as a joint system, a joint sure. unit, a joint sure. activity, excuse me. Sure. Now, you retired, I know, a few years ago. And I know, but I didn't know at the time, there's actual life after the military. <laughs> what, what did you do after the military? Did you find employment right away? Did you take some time off? Did you go to school? What did you do? Well, the first thing I can say is that there is no time for time off. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to continue to live the lifestyle that you live, and, yeah. I, and I like the lifestyle that I live, I said, well, I'm going to work. I retired at the age of 39 which is quite young. And what I decided is I'll just start dropping applications. I was dropping applications for about six months. Boom, 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 boom. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then finally a job fair came up and my Mm -hmm. husband encouraged me, highly encouraged me (laughs) to go to the job, uh, excuse me, the job fair. I went and there was an opportunity for a Job interview on the spot with the Environmental Protection Agency. I did the interview on the spot. I was told they'll give me a call. They called me the next day. The next week, I had the second interview, which, if you don't know, that's a good thing. In the (laughs) civilian sector, that's a good thing. They called me in and said, uh, well, we'd like to talk to you, Ramona. I said, okay. And and we talked a little bit more about my background and and my expertise in human resources. And the deputy director said, well, let me take you on a tour. I said, okay, no problem, sir. He took me on the tour. I said, uh, I, I don't know if you don't mind, but um, could you just tell me, is there a reason why you're taking me on this tour? Because I would like to know if I have the job. Sure. There's no reason to give me a tour of this lovely facility. With I worked, it was on the lake. Oh, really? And he said, no, Ramona, I can't officially tell you you have the job, but unofficially you have the job. All right, take me for the tour. <laughs> Let's go to tour. <laughs> yes. And so that's what I did after the military. I am now I was working for the federal government. I worked at the Environmental Protection Agency in the Human wow. Resources Department for four years in Durham, North Carolina. And then now I've transferred over to Womack Army Medical Center at Fort Bragg, where I oh. do the onboarding for the hospital there at Fort Bragg. So I'm, I'm in the federal government. I, I seek employment. I feel like I need to give back to the world by helping individuals and making sure sure they have a voice as well. So, so basically you you did your time, did your journey. You were not sitting back. You were still looking for another way to serve and obviously earned somewhat of an employment because we know, even though we retire in the military, we get about a third of our pay. Exactly. <laughs> we have different uh, benefits, housing allowances yes. and things, but yes. they, they cut that out. Mm-hmm. And then we get half of our base pay yes. if, if we're lucky. So yes. almost even get less. Mm-hmm. So it's a good thing. You're still serving. You're still giving back. You're still healthy. Mm-hmm. Do you ever miss the military? Yes, of course. Yeah. I miss the military. And I think the, the one person that was in the most shock when I said, I, I feel like I should retire my husband. He almost <laughs> fell out of the chair. We were at Boston Market having dinner, and I said, I, need, I have some big news for you. And he said, what's going on? Do you have a new assignment? Because it's very hard in the military, as dual military soldiers, to get on the same assignment. And it was difficult for us because I'm human resources, and he was a transporter in logistics. Oh. And I said, no, it's not that kind of news. I, I'm going to go ahead and retire. He he, he turned white as a ghost. He said, oh, you've got to be kidding. Really? Because I, I had all these plans of what I was going to do in the Army, how I was going to change the Army. I was going to change the world. Change the world. I was going to be the first woman, blah, blah, blah. But um, <laughs> no, I just I knew it was time to hang out my hat, and and I enjoyed the ride. I loved wow. my my time as being a soldier. But to, to answer your question, yeah, I miss, I miss it sometimes, uh-huh. and I work amongst soldiers so it reminds me of the impact that I had, wow. but I just remember the legacy that it left. Wow. You know, that's a pretty amazing story. Uh, you, you, you give up, you're still giving, you're still healthy, and you're still involved with the military, not working on the base. And it, obviously, you live in the community, and you deal with soldiers on a regular basis, and it's always part of our lives. It is. It it's is. always, a, a, even the good and the bad times, it yeah. still experiences most of us wouldn't trade. Of course, being in harm's way or potential harm's way is scary. Mm-hmm. But if we don't do it, who's going to do it? Exactly. And, well, exactly. I'm glad you served. I am glad you served as well. Thank you so much. I Thank appreciate you. you, Ramona. Thank you. And look her up in North Carolina, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Look her up. <laughs> Have a great day. Hooah! Hooah! Aim high. <laughs>